When Pandit was growing up in India in the 1800s, it was hard to be a girl. Girls weren't allowed to go to school and they could be married as young as seven and then they became the property of their husband's families. Pandita was lucky. Her father was a scholar and he wanted his wife and daughters to have an education. In fact, Pandita became famous as one of the best Hindu scripture scholars in India. Her name, Pandita, actually is a title that means wise teacher, and Pandita was the first woman in India to receive this commendation. But knowing all those Hindu scriptures actually made Pandita sad. Men were interpreting the scriptures to read that women were evil and couldn't be trusted. Plus, India had a caste system. People were as con considered as important as their jobs were. If your father was a priest, you weren't allowed to be friends with someone whose father was a lawyer. And shopkeepers, they couldn't eat meals with farmers and nobody would talk to the garbage men. Then Pandita met one of the first Indian Bible scholars. Nehemiah Gora introduced Pandita to the Christian faith. Pandita was curious. Jesus said all people were equal. I want to learn more about Jesus, Pandita told her friends. So she went to England and there she met Christians and she was amazed. They talked to everybody. They helped anyone who needed help. Pandita loved learning about Jesus and started reading the Bible. Oh, I believe that Jesus is the savior sent by God said Pandita to her new friends, I want to be baptized. Well, Pandita kept reading about Jesus. She kept reading books about the Bible. Something was still missing in Pandita's life. She didn't know what it was, but she decided she wanted to go back to India and open a home that would be a safe place for any women and girls who needed a place to live. So that Hindu officials would allow her to open a school and donors from different American churches would help finance it, Pandita agreed not to teach any religion at the school. But Pandita every morning kept her door open while she read her Bible and prayed and sang hymns. One by one, the girls would come in to see what she was doing. And one by one, the girls started giving their lives to Jesus. You must stop teaching about Jesus, the Hindu official said. No, said Pandita, I have freedom in Christ. I keep my door open all day long. You can't make me close it when I'm worshiping. And the Hindu officials left her alone. Well, as Pandita continued reading her Bible, she soon realized what was missing in her life. I've been thinking about Jesus as the savior of the world, Pandita told her Christian friends. I finally realized I need him as my savior. My sins are great, and I'm so thankful Jesus died to take the punishment for my sins. Well, Pandita had a new way of living. Instead of asking God to help her with her work, she started asking God what he wanted her to do and then trusted him completely to meet all of her needs. One idea God gave Pandita was to buy a farm. This way the girls and women could feed themselves. Well, her American donors didn't think this was a good idea, but that didn't stop Pandita. She just kept praying, God, if you want me to have a farm, you're going to have to send me the money to buy a farm. Pandita and her helpers kept on praying and God sent the money. Soon they had a farm they called Mukti Sadan, home of salvation. And shortly after that, a famine struck India. Pandita wanted to be able to feed many, many children. She thought of Jesus and how he could feed 5,000 men plus women and children with just two fish and five loaves of bread. Jesus, if you want me to take care of children during this famine, you're going to need to provide the money and the children. Within four years, Pandita was taking care of 2,000 children, including orphan boys. They had a home, they had plenty of food to eat, they went to school, they learned jobs, and most importantly, they learned about Jesus. And that was the most important thing in Pandita's life. She wanted as many people in India as possible to learn about Jesus. So she trained some of the women to be Bible teachers and sent them out into the surrounding communities. And she spent 18 years translating the Bible into the language that the commoners use. This way, everyone could learn about Jesus. 
Mukti Sadan is now known as Mukti Mission. For 130 years, it has been a safe place for women and girls in India and a place where everyone can learn about Jesus. Now, you and I may have just learned about Pandita Ramabai tonight, but in India, she's very famous. But interestingly, she's not known as a Christian in India. She's famous for being a social reformer, someone who brought great change that was needed for women and girls in India. But if you were to ask Pandita how she wanted to be remembered, she would tell you, I am a child of God, completely committed to doing what he wants. And a life totally committed to God has nothing to fear, nothing to lose, nothing to regret. Girls and boys, how do you want to be remembered?